is the the Lord is risen. A warm welcome to each and every one of us to this Easter Sunday. We thank you for coming and worship with us at the cathedral. We pray that the Lord will guide us and lead us and bless us as we gather together. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we adore you this day for a great day of victory when you conquered death and swallowed it completely forever. And now in your resurrection we have hope and we pray, pray that Lord you will give us hope and be people who live in hope. Give us opportunity to deepen our faith even as we hear your word. And may every song we shall sing today bring honor and glory to your name and all our prayers and supplications bring honor and glory to your name and bless us, your people, as we gather. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
And the people sang in joyful praise. Alleluia, alleluia. now ask that we please be standing. And the responses to this service will be projected. So in the spirit of corporate worship, we encourage you to respond with oomph, with a little power. In this service, His Grace the Archbishop will uh, bring God's word. He will uh, also induct uh, the Reverend Canon Peter Dolua as the Vicar General. In this service, he will also induct uh, Canon Ivan Zomolo as the Archdeacon for All Saints Cathedral Archdeaconry. So those will come at the tail end, and later, his grace, um, later, Assistant Bishop will lead us in breaking bread. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. The name of the Lord be praised. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. As we sit on Neil, we can say the prayer for purity together. Almighty God, to whom all are to be. 
our Lord Jesus Christ said. The first and great commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these.
As we stand, we join in the collect for Easter Sunday. We say together, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He broke the chains of death and Hades and gloriously resurrected and now lives and reigns forever through his death and resurrection. We have the assurance of eternal life. Help us, Lord, to thy daily to sin, that we may evermore live with you in the joy of his risen life. In your name we pray. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning to read at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning to read at verse 1. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. This, by this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he, buried, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace to me was not without effect. No. I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Before the word. As the choir blesses us with an anthem, I want to ask a team, uh, the music team from Christ Church uh, Westlands, please make your way as you are from where you are to near the altar, near where the clergy are. You'll see where the lay reader and Kilimo is. Please sit there so that when your time comes, we do not have uh, to waste time transitioning. Please, Robin, Jiru, and your team, kindly up next to the altar rail. To Cephas Christ, my dear brothers, Christ is risen. Today, the Christian world, throughout the world rather, joins in celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It marks the beginning of 50 days of Eastertide season, which runs through to Pentecost Sunday. And if you look across to the altar, you will see a larger candle, the third candle. This is the Paschal or Easter candle, normally lit at the eve of Easter, which is yesterday. And it will be lit throughout the season of Easter. Easter season is characterized above all by the joy of glorified life and the victory over death expressed mostly in the great resounding cry of Christian Alleluia, which dominates our music today. 
Anthem, the Easter Song by Joseph Martin. The text from various gospel verses is a joyous song with alleluias. He is risen just as he said, for death is dead, love has won, Christ has conquered, he is no longer dead, alleluia.
we stand to hear the good news of our salvation as it is written in the gospel according to St. John chapter 20, beginning to read at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. This is the gospel of Christ. Amen. His Grace the Archbishop brings God's word to us and your grace on behalf of the council and this congregation, we warmly welcome you as you speak to us from God. Law in the grave he lay.
In Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, we read these words. When I saw him, I felt at I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive forever and ever. And behold, the keys of death and Hades are in my hands. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, a day we stand to glorify the victory you won for us on the cross when you died for our sins. But this Easter Sunday morning, you arose, and indeed you are alive forever. Lord, deepen our faith as we reflect on your word. Increase in us, O oh God, that, so, that we may decrease and surrender totally to your will. Speak to us your word, the word of life. Use me as you will, that, Lord, we shall be able to follow you all the days of our lives. This we ask, trusting and believing in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please let us be seated. The provost, all our deacon present, our assistant bishop, all our clergy, all members of All Saints Cathedral and our visitors, and I know today we have a number even from our neighboring parishes. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen we thank God for the opportunity he has given us to be together this afternoon to worship him to adore him as we celebrate Easter and this Easter Sunday. My name is Jackson Olesapit. The Lord is my personal savior. By the grace of God, the Archbishop of uh, the Anglican Church of Kenya and Bishop of All Saints Cathedral Diocese. I do welcome you all in this our service and may the Lord bless us together as we explore and share his word. Easter change the world. By his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ demonstrated that it is possible to overcome forces of evil and darkness and pass from despair to hope, from de depression to realities of life and joy, from failure to victory, and even from death to life because he is risen. We too can rise and stand even in the face of great adversity, which often characterizes the journey of life. In yesterday's in a nation newspaper, the headline is Easter that has a tale of two modes of Easter or models of Easter. One of the halves and another of the have nots. One of those who are feeling victorious and vindicated, some who are feeling lowly and in scarcity and are depressed. It was trying to, dip, to display the disparities we have in a nation called Kenya and the world over, where many are subjected to hardships and others have more than enough and more than they need. And the way we display uh, our joy or sadness is in those differentiation. I wonder what Easter represents to you as you celebrate this one. I wonder what you're going through at the moment. But all of us are not in the same space. We could be different spaces, both in faith, but also in facing the realities of life. Some of us are in hospital, incapacitated. Some had no meal yesterday. Some had slept out in the cold because they have nowhere to call home. But for you and me, who has a place to call home, how do we celebrate Easter? How do we bring the story of Easter to those who are suffering for them to feel the victory of the risen Lord? 
God still says, as he said in Revelation, I stand resurrected, alive forever, inviting each and every one of us to the space where he will be able to give us opportunities for life to celebrate him, even as we celebrate this Easter. There lived one time a great preacher, and he taught the Bible using stories. And the stories he had always captivated people and helped them understand the deeper, faith, the deeper meaning of the word of God in simple terms. But one time, he had also to face calamity, and his wife died and left him with young daughters to raise alone. In the eve of the funeral to the mother of these children, the youngest of all asked her daddy, why did mom have to die? Must she die? Why? Why did she have to leave us at this tender age? What explanation can you give? You have also always told us Bible stories, story after story, narrating and we understood. But this one thing we don't understand. Why had she to die? This preacher also struggling with the realities that has faced them as a family had no answer to their daughter. He only said to her, my daughter, I have no answer now, but I will look for an answer soon. I will tell you the answer. So they slept still in mourning and in misery with all the questions lingering around their minds as to why, why. But tomorrow, the following day, they were driving now to the funeral service. They were caught in a traffic jam. And uh, immediately, there was a truck that came against their car, which when it stopped, allowed the heat rays of the sun to come in in that early morning and brightened and warmed the car. But when this truck came by, overshadowing it, brought darkness and a cool moment inside their car. The father got an opportunity. He said to them, daughters, which is easier and which do you prefer, to be hit by a truck or to be hit by a shadow of a truck? And one of the daughters asked daddy, what a silly question. How can you compare a hitting of a drug, a truck and a shadow? The shadow will not hurt. The truck will kill. So he began to explain the death of their mother as one who died who knew the Lord. And as the Bible teaches us in Psalms 23, we will all have to go through the valley and the shadow of death but the Bible says, I fear no evil, for my Lord is there to protect, guide, and guard me. I wonder whether the daughters understood, but he tried to explain that the dying of a person who has faith is like a shadow has struck, because Christ was the one who took death on a cross for us, and he rose again, and therefore death has been swallowed. Yes, we shall all experience this heartbreaking reality that none of us can be able to comprehend or even get used to called death. We all know that one day it will come to us. When we were in theological college, one of our lecturers in systematic theology came and uh, in the introduction to the lesson, uh, he said, we are all death waiters. Every one of us is a death waiter. So we were wondering, is he a prophet of doom? What is he saying? Then he, 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 you know, he caught us by surprise and we are all like, what, what does he want to tell us? And he said, I can see gloom in your faces, but I'm just telling you the realities. Let us now discuss about death and what it means because we are all death 
waiters. So this man was struggling to make her daughters understand the death of her mother. Very, very painful. And it's normally very, very painful and very hard. And we go many, many months asking questions that are not answered. But the Bible helps us to understand. And through Christ, his death and his resurrection, there is now hope that death is just but something that is temporary for those who are in Christ Jesus, and death can be overcome, and it has been overcome by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 25, verse 8 and 9, we read these words. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from the faces of the disgrace of his people. He will take away home. He will take away from them. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken, I will be said on that day, it will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is a Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. Death will be swallowed forever. And indeed, Christ, on this Easter Sunday morning, when he conquered death and rose from the dead, demonstrated that it is doable, and because he's God, death has no power over him and all those who trust in him. Therefore, brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this Easter, whatever the, reali the realities of your life and whatever you are going through, Death is but a shadow, Christ demonstrates. For us who believe and trust in him, it will come, but we shall be awaiting the great resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the hope of the Christian faith. There are no other religions that talk of the resurrection of Jesus or the Savior. They all talk of a life after death. But this one tells us, the Bible tells us clearly, Christ conquered, and now it is possible for us to be invited to the eternal kingdom of the Father. The darkness of the tomb represents all our hard moments of life. Loss of a loved one is called to range. A terminal disease may have incapacitated us. Rejection, brokenness in marriage and other relationships, all these throw us out of balance and we live a very imbalanced life hopeless and are driven into despair. Many of us are sent to be hopeless when businesses crash or when we lose a job or when the opportunities we have yearned for diminish. Those who are farmers, when the drought and the crops did not mature, are sent into devastation. And life has many of these stories and we are all witnesses. We have experienced them once or twice or our loved ones and our neighbors have, and we have seen it. But the gospel message gives us hope that despite the challenges, the shortcomings, and the sad moments, the resurrection of Jesus Christ has come with hope that we can also arise and conquer whatever is limiting us today. Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ represents a conquering of what limits and give us opportunity to the unlimitless eternal kingdom of God. And that's why in Revelation we read, I am alive forever, Jesus declares. I have conquered death forever. Death is one limiting thing that sends us into total darkness. But because Christ was raised from the dead, now we have hope that our limitation can also be uh, lifted up and we can soar like eagles and scale heights never scaled before. With Jesus and encounter with Jesus Christ, we can be able to progress and are uplifted to do greater things than we have ever imagined. 
We can move from one location to another. We can move from one ladder of life to another life because Christ has showed us that he conquers what limits us. And there are many limitations in life. One great such limitation is the limitation brought by sin to our lives. In sin, we are destined to die. In sin, we lose relationship. In sin, we are rendered powerless. But Christ comes, and Revelation 3.20, he says, I stand at the door of your heart, knocking. Whoever opens, I will be glad to enter in, dine with him or her, and we have communion and fellowship, not just for that one day, but for life. An entry into our space, Christ is beckoning us. Open the door. Open the door. The risen Lord is reminding us that he's here for us, but he's still knocking at the door of every heart. And whoever opens willingly, the Lord come in, empower us, and remove the obstacles that stand on the way and give us a joy of freedom because of the resurrection. So in him, we have hope. Amen? In Christ, we have hope. In the power of the resurrection, we can be lifted high. We can get to places we have never imagined and attain accolades that we have never imagined that we can. Recognition will come your way. Not just, just because you are a celebrity according to the standards of the world, but Christ lives in you. Amen? When he lives in us, our lives will reflect the radiance of his glory when he's resurrected. And us are also enlisted as members of the eternal kingdom of the Father. Therefore, this Easter Sunday morning, as Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, found an empty tomb, she was not aware what happened. She thought somebody may have come to steal the body. And for her, her mission was for the preservation of the body from decay. She was there to, you know, to, to, to make it better. But she didn't know. The Lord has made it even more better because the body has risen. Death is conquered. She came running back as a great evangelist to the disciples. Come and see. Witness. Something happened. The body is not there. And they all ran. Peter being outrun, but he was the first to enter inside the tomb when he arrived. He saw the linen scattered, folded properly, and uh, if we are to read through the entire story, uh, the angel asked, why are you looking for the living among the dead? For Christ is not here. He's alive. And as they leave without proper understanding, go back to join the disciples as were promised. Go and wait me until I come. Mary still lingered without being sure. And again, the Savior appeared to her more clearly and tell her who he is until she believed. Many of us will be like Thomas. When Jesus appeared, he wanted to see and feel and to attest that it is him by touching where the spear went through on his side, where the nails went on his, hair, on his hands and legs before he believed. What does it tell us? In our limited human mind, it is very hard to, exp to understand the explanation of the resurrection. But in Jesus, we have the revelation. Through his spirit, he interprets God's word. And in faith and total surrender, we shall experience the resurrected Lord. The invitation is still on. I knock at the door of your heart. When you open, I will enter, dine with you, and attend your every other need, physical, mental, and also spiritual, because you want us whole, not in house. He wants us alive with him forever. He wants us in communion with him forever. So the invitation is for all of us, you included today, that don't let this Easter Sunday pass by 
without you opening the door of your heart for the Lord Jesus to come in and dine with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you for reminding us that the resurrection is not just an event that has happened, but a testimony that you conquer every limiting space and you can enable us to be unlimited when we trust and have faith in you. So Lord, we do open the doors of our heart for you to come in, dine with us, commune with us, fellowship with us, as you introduce each and every one of us to your kingdom. We stand totally surrendered to your will, O oh God, that may this Easter Sunday morning, Easter Sunday as we celebrate, be a true celebration, for we have found and affirmed our relationship with you. So come in, dine with us, commune with us. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and appointed as pirate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection and the life of the world to come. I request that we sit or kneel and join in prayer. May the bishops and the leaders of our churches have wisdom and speak with one voice. May the leaders of our country rule with righteousness. May justice be our shield and defender. May the country have peace and people be blessed. May the frogs and the herds prosper and fish abound in our lakes. May the fields be fatter and harvest plentiful. May we and our enemies turn towards peace. May the love of the Father touch the lonely, the believed, and the suffering. May the path of the world be swept, of the world be swept of all dangers. Continue in prayer of penitence. Hear the words of challenge and comfort our Savior Christ says to all who follow him. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Come to me, or who you are tired of carrying your heavy loads, and I will give you rest. So, all of you who repent of your sins, who love your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the way of Jesus, come with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen you. Let us reverently confess our sins to the Almighty God together. 
Almighty God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. They make us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Strengthen your life in his kingdom and keep you upright to the last day through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness. We come to your table as your children, not presuming but assured, not trusting us. With the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. I now invite Leverett Canon Adolua to be inducted as the Vicar General of All Saints Cathedral Diocese. Yeah, we are in the process of inducting our Vicar General, uh, the Reverend Canon Peter Dolua, uh, after his appointment as the Vicar General of the Diocese of All Saints. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is, is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplication and prayers, which we offer before you this day, and for this your servant, the Reverend Canon Peter Adolua, whom we have presented unto you as Vicar General of the Diocese of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. Grant him the grace to serve faithfully, humbly, and with the spirit of dedication to the glory of your name in the advancement of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We will ask the diocesan chancellor to in the making of oath. Leave the Bible with your right hand. I, Peter Adolwa, do promise and profess that I will pray, pay true and canonical obedience to the Bishop of All Saints Cathedral Diocese and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. I, Peter Adolwa, priest, having already taken and subscribed to the declarations and oaths which by law or custom are required do solemnly promise to undertake the duties of Vicar General in the All Saints Cathedral Diocese when duly appointed thereto. I promise to uphold the authority of the Bishop of All Saints Cathedral Diocese and his successors in all legal and just demands, and I agree to exercise the, uh, to, uh, to exercise the said office of Vicar General for, for so long as may be required of me by the Bishop of All Saints Cathedral Diocese and his successors. So help me God. Thank you. Amen. So I now ask him to meet with his wife, Dr. Linda. I'll hold your hand. Canon Peter Dolua, 
I induct you to the office of Vicar General in the Diocese of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. May the Holy Spirit guide and empower you as you fulfill your ministry. And may you be faithful servant of Christ, a wise counselor to me, and a shepherd of his people. I present to you this Bible as a token of your ministry and a tool of trade of your work. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for your servant, Canon Peter Adolua, and his wife, Dr. Linda, and their children, whom we have commissioned as a vicar general in your church. Pour out upon him the gift of your Holy Spirit, that he may fulfill faithfully the duties of his office. Grant him wisdom, strength, and compassion, and grant that in all things he may seek your glory and the welfare of your church through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I will now call upon the archdeacons to lead him and seat him. Uh, oh, there is a certificate we'll sign. After that, he'll be led to sit in the seat assigned for the Vicar General of the Diocese of All Saints. Praise the Lord. We will ask uh, Canon Peter to face the congregation. I want to introduce him now to the congregation. Now to the members of All Saints Cathedral Diocese. You know we have translated this service now into a diocesan function. I present to you the Reverend Canon Peter Adolua. Now the Vicar General of the Diocese of All Saints, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will now ask the archdeacons to go and sit him. And uh, members of Christ Church, get ready to sing and celebrate your vicar, who is now the Vicar General of the Diocese. As Now, Christ Church Choir, please. Thank you very much, Archbishop. Christians of All Saints Cathedral Diocese, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is now risen. See what the Lord has done. We are humbled and honored to escort our vicar, the Reverend Canon Peter Adolwa, to his induction and installation as the Vicar General of All Saints Cathedral Diocese. We at Christ Church are very proud of this achievement. We thank the Archbishop and the entire leadership of the Diocese for this recognition. We thank God for this and pray that Canon Peter Adolwa will dedicate himself to this new role in the same way that he dedicated himself uh, to the service of our parish of Christ Church, which has led to tremendous growth, both physically 
and spiritually of our church and the people who attend it. We congratulate you, Canon Adolwa, and wish you Godspeed. And may God bless us all. In Christ alone is where we have our hope. Asante Nina Karibuni to this to this choir of ours. I was going to ask Canon to join us, but from where he was seated, I don't know. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, found through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving ceases, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From lies first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my death. No power, no power, no scheme, no scheme, oh, can never me from his hand till he returns. Oh, calls me home here in the power of Christ. No power, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns. Oh, calls me home here in the power of Christ. I stand. Thank you so much, Christ Church. May God bless you. San Tony San. We are immediately transiting to the uh, induction and installation of the Archdeacon of All Saints Cathedral Archdeaconary. We will now ask uh, the other Archdeacons to go and bring their fellow Archdeacon. Uh, to us. Just bear with us. This is a very ceremonial church. <laughs> and today, as we celebrate grace rising from the dead, we're also celebrating these great ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Together. Our Father, Father in God, God 
we present to you the very Reverend Canon Evans Mamoro, so that you may induct him to the service as an archdeacon in the Diocese of All Saints Cathedral. Take care that the person you present to us is by his learning and godly life suitable to exercise the office of archdeacon to the honor and uh, the building of Christ Church. We have, we have inquired, inquired about him, him and he has been examined to the best of our assessment as being fit for the office. Brothers and sisters, those whose duty is to inquire about this person and examine him are satisfied that the same is found is sound learning and lives a godly life and believes in him uh, to be duly called to serve God in the ministry of his church. Nevertheless, if anyone has any just cause as to why we should not proceed and induct uh, the Reverend Canon, very Reverend Canon uh, Evans of Molo as a archdeacon, come forward now and make it known. Or else, hold your peace forever. We pray that the Almighty God will give him grace and wisdom as he serves in his ministry. I now ask you, Evans, is it your wish that we induct you and install you as the Archdeacon of All Saints Cathedral Archdeaconary? Yes, Your Grace, that is my wish by God's grace. We give glory to God that you have been found suitable and capable to be admitted to the sacred trust of an archdeacon to which you have been called. Let us now remind you of the duties of an archdeacon so that the people committed to your charge and also know the mind and the will with which you are ready to accept the care and supervision entrusted to you in the name of God. The office of the archdeacon is, digni is dignified it's a dignified office in the church which carries responsibilities with it under the bishop. It is a duty of the archdeacon to work under the bishop in the administration of the diocese. Will you do this gladly and willingly? I will do, God being my helper. It is a duty of the archdeacon to extend spiritual care to the clergy within the archdeaconary and to educate parishes on the extension of Christ's kingdom. Will you do this gladly and willingly? I will do, God being my helper. It is the duty of the archdeacon to oversee parish work in the archdeaconary. Will you endeavor to do all these things gladly and willingly? I will endeavor to do all these things, God being my helper. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is written in the Gospel of St. Luke that the Lord Jesus Christ prayed the whole night before appointing and sending the twelve apostles. It is also written in the Acts of the Apostles that the disciples who were in Antioch fasting and prayed before laying hands on Paul and Barnabas and sending them out. So also ourselves as we follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ and his apostles, we pray, we must pray before accepting and sending this person or uh, uh, this person who are about to induct as a archdeacon to do the work of the Holy Spirit, the work the Holy Spirit has called him to do. So I will ask him and Celine just to kneel as we pray. Uh, we'll pray for him and then I'll ask the Chancellor to administer the oath of office. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for appointing Reverend, very Reverend Canon Evans of Molo also as the Archdeacon of All Saints Cathedral Archdeaconary. Bless him and Celine and their children. Bless their going out and their coming in. Bless them in the ministry in this church and the ministry in our diocese. Empower him. May your Holy Spirit rest upon him make him a vessel, an agent of necessity at this point in time to bring your word alive in the lives of many. 
This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll ask that you stand and uh, the Chancellor now administer. I, Evans Omolo, do promise and profess that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Bishop of All Saints Cathedral Diocese and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. I, Evans Omolo, priest, having already taken and subscribed at the declarations and oaths which by law or custom are required, do solemnly promise to undertake the duties of an archdeacon in the church in the All Saints Cathedral Archdeaconry of Diocese of All Saints Cathedral when duly admitted thereto. I promise to uphold the authority of the Bishop of All Saints Cathedral Diocese and his successors in all legal and just demands and I agree to exercise the said office of Archdeacon for so long as may be required of me by the Bishop of All Saints Cathedral Diocese and his successors. So help me God. Amen. He'll now sign the oath. Evans, I induct you as an archdeacon in the Diocese of All Saints Cathedral in the Archdeaconary of All Saints Cathedral Archdeaconary. May the Lord be with you. You are going out and you are coming in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I present you with this Bible as a token and a tool of your ministry in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, descend upon this, your servant. You did to the apostles, the way you did to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Send him and the vicar general your heart, set their hearts with the flames of fire for mission and ministry to which you have called them. May they serve you faithfully and zealously, courageously, all the times in their ministry. You can now turn to the people. Now to the people of All Saints Cathedral Archdeaconary, I present to you this your servant, the very reverend who is now venerable, Canon Evans Omolo, whom we have just inducted as the archdeacon in the diocese, will you support and uphold him in, your, in his ministry with your prayers? A bit of ululation choir, where are you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> And now as we stand, uh, we also welcome the Vicar General. They stand here because I will share the peace with them as I invite all of us now to share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Now, I'm reminded the archdeacons needed to seat him now. <laughs> he has not been seated. Now he can be led by the archdeacons to seat him and uh, as we transit to the next uh, part of the service. So, uh, Ana Elekesu Asasa, 
Sasa wacha mimi nipeleke Vika General. Alikuwa amekuwa stranded atapelekwa na nani? <laughs> Asanteni sana. Now, my first role as the Archdeacon is to <laughs> your grace as we as Canon Peter and I uh, take oath of, oath of office to support you. Some of the Christians are asking, Sasa una, una stop kuwa provost? Na Canon Peter na stop kuwa vika wa Christchurch? No, we are not relinquishing our roles. These are added responsibilities to support the ministry of His Grace the Archbishop. May we, may we please, uh, I want to ask that the visitors, if you're visiting the cathedral, uh, you are new, please remain standing. The rest of us, please, we invite you uh, to be seated. You are new. Our ushers and sidesmen are available to give you a slip. Thank you. Thank you. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Uh, the sidesmen, uh, please uh, give them the tokens. The visitor slips. Kindly fill in that slip. We love visitors. We'd want to stay in touch with you. If you are around, please worship with us again. If you're on transit, take our greetings and love to your home church and to your family as well. As we give our gifts, we will be giving our gifts, but let me request His Grace to acknowledge some special guests who are with us. Your Grace, Karibu. Praise the Lord. They are not unknown to us. We want to recognize the presence of our assistant bishop, uh, Professor Galgalo. Is with us, he will celebrate Holy Communion with us. We also want to recognize the presence of the former provincial secretary, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Rosemary Mbogo, is with us, and not alone with the Sospita Mbogo, engineer, her husband, Reverend. May God bless you. And any other visitor who may have come to worship with us this day, feel most welcome. God bless you. Thank you very much indeed, Your Grace. And of course, special welcome to the Christ Church family. To uh, Makaribisha Sana, Sana, Sana. Asanteni Sana, Kukipiga Vika General Jeki Kuba Kabisa. Asanteni. Kwa wakati who will now worship God with our gifts. Uh, the Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, that give and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. The promise of God is. When we are generous to his cause, then he becomes generous to us. So as we sit, we will be singing. For the sake of visitors, please, we use the pay bill numbers 30, 30, 36 for various forms of giving. Just write the account name, offertory, tithe, or organ fund. For CTC gifts for our children uh, and teens project, it's 30, 30, 35 from M-Pesa pay bill, and the account is CTC. If you have cash or your checks, the ushers will wait on us so the bags will pass around. May we sit as the choir ministers to us as we worship the Lord with our gifts.
All things come from thee, O Lord and our God. The Lord, we thank you and we praise you for these tithes, gifts, and offerings your servants have given unto the Lord as their act of worship to the Lord. We pray that, dear Lord, you'll accept these gifts and bless them, Lord, for the extension of thy kingdom. May you might play your blessings upon everyone who has given for this purpose. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Please be stand. We remain standing for thanksgiving and remembrance. Is the Father with us? Yes. Is Christ among us? Yes. Is the Spirit here? Yes. This is our God. Father, Son, we, are we are redeemed. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord and our God. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, great Father, living God, supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. And now we give you thanks because you raised him gloriously from the dead. Through him, you have given us the resurrection hope. For our life will be changed, not taken away. When our mortal flesh is laid aside, we will enter everlasting dwelling place to live with him. Therefore, with angels, archangels, faithful ancestors, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Almighty God, honor of all things, we thank you for giving up your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded, through these gifts of your creation. On the same night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Amen. Jesus. This is the feast of victory. We kneel or sit. And as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom. And deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread 
to share in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless. Draw near with faith and receive. Christ is alive forever. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, keep your body and soul to eternal life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, keep your body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Amen. As we come to the Lord's table, for those who are visiting, just come and kneel. Wait for the sidesmen to direct you. Uh, remain seated. They will direct you. Whether you are seated on the sides, as you come, just kneel. Once you receive, uh, get up with your small cup, and there is a, a, a basin behind you. Drop it there. So don't return it to the tray. May we experience the resurrected Savior as you commune on this table.
Please stand. Let us join together in the post communion prayer. Almighty God, Son of Father, we have sat at your feet. Land from your Lord. Send us out with your blessing. We are to witness for you in the power of your Spirit through Jesus Christ, the first one from the dead. Amen. Please be seated briefly for one or two notices before the benediction. Thank you, uh, Bishop Professor Joseph, for uh, breaking the bread for us. Uh, to All Saints Cathedral members, most of our notices are on our website, uh, so please do access. I'll only publish the bands of marriage. So we publish the bands of marriage between Geoffrey Kirui and Martha Awino, both of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. We also publish the bands of marriage between Alex Mushira Mwangi and Jed Mugure Maura, both of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi, and this is the third time of announcing. For the first time of announcing, we published the bands of marriage between Solomon Njeru Ndirangu and Millicent Wanjiku Gishuki, both of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. Should there be anyone with a just cause why these couples shouldn't be joined together in holy matrimony, please do let us know of such objection. Amen. Your grace. I invite that we all stand so that we receive the final blessings. We want to send all our problems to the cross of Christ, the risen Lord who have conquered all and is going to sort out each and every soul. As we send all our problems, just recall to mind and prayerfully send whatever may be weighing you down at this point in time. All our problems, all our difficulties, all the devil's work, and all our hopes, Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon each one of us and scatter darkness from before our path. Darkness in our minds because of ignorance, enlighten us. Darkness in our hearts because of sin, Lord, forgive us. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.